Yeah, all right. All right, but listen. I said listen. Setting up this deal for you with what's his name, Dave, right? It's going to be the last favour I do for you. Got it, Pam? And I never want to hear about or clap my eyes on flaming Roy Van so long as I live. Got it? Oh. Well, that's not bad, that. Yeah, anyway, I've got to go now. ta -ra. Whose idea was it for grooms to wear ties, eh? Okay. It was on the floor. I was just checking to see what time the horse and carriage is oh, setting off. Oh, come here, you're all fingers and thumbs, lad. Did you never wear a tie when you were at school? Well, we wore sweatshirts. When I went in, anyway. <laughs> love and marriage, love and marriage. Go together like an horse and carriage. Now, you calm down. Only one thing you've got to worry about today, son. And that is making your little Molly happy. Comprende? Comprende. Aye, 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 aye. Are you all right? This is for you, Opal. What is it? Ah, you've got a lovely smile, you know. You are cordially invited to a movie afternoon with Peter and Simon Spielberg. Pizza pop and pet cemetery. It's the only film I could think of that began with a P. Mm, try Psycho. No, the P's silent in that, and I wanted it to be like, you know, sound the same. There's a word for it. Were you drunk when you wrote this? <laughs> oh. Do you know what? You are twisted, using a poor innocent child to manipulate me into a date. A date with the two hottest guys in Weatherfield? Yeah, well, I haven't said I'm coming yet, have I? Ah, yet. So that means you're gonna. Well, that's only because of Smiler here. He fancies you, big time, he said. Hey, don't give away trade secrets. Although I'm gonna let you off because you are now my official babe magnet. Oh, well, describing me as a babe, of course, we'll get you everywhere. <laughs> See you later. See ya. She called me Smiler. Dude, we did it. Oh, oh, my head. Remind me never to turn 18 again. Can you buy a contraption at the chemist? Well, you don't need a morning after pill, do you? Well, they take your brain out, give it a good scrub, and then put it back in again. I think that's called joining the Moonies, isn't it? The Moonies? I know. You never hear anything about them anymore, do you? But, you know. In the 70s, folks were joining them in the droves. Well, I am too excited to have a hangover. Today, I finally become... A lady! A married lady! Oh, I feel a bit like... You better get someone to sort that, and fast. It's not a good look on a bridesmaid chucking up in the font. I think it was that last cocktail that did it. Whereas I was a good girl and drank two litres of water before bed, and for every bevy I had, I had a sparkling water after. Get you, Virginia Virtuous. I've got a craving for stodge. That's the worst thing about binge drinking. You become totally carb-centric the next day. I'm shaking, look. DTs. Excitement. You know, even Jackie showing her very ugly mug didn't spoil things too much. She was an amazing creature. The things you see when you haven't got a gun. So she's still knocking about then, or what? Nope, I spoke to Ty earlier. She's well and truly gone. You played a blinder there, Auntie Pam. Hey, good riddance to bad rubbish. Or as my mam used to say, good shuttons. Now, get one of these down your necks. <laughs> oh, here we go. The rovers on wheels. Sorry? I heard them bottles clanking from over there. Very droll. Who said I were jesting? Pizzas. From the deli counter at Freshco's, handmade. And what do you want them to spin the door with? Their feet? Oh, and a couple of bottles of wine. Peeping out between the DVDs. Oh, excuse me if I fall to the floor in shock. Or are there bottles of olive oil disguised as Merlot? I'm having an afternoon of movie magic with Leanne, if you must know. Do you know what, Blanche? You'd have been great in the Gestapo. Oh, drinking in the afternoon, eh? Happy hour just gets earlier and earlier. Just off to polish my jack boots. They're not for me. They're for Leanne. Oh, sorry. Oh, what? Oh, I'm gonna look like Boy George at this rate. Oh, and as if on cue? Did somebody call for the glambulance? Quick, it's a hair and makeup emergency. I spy one bride in definite need of a makeover. What? 
A little surprise from your fiancé, darling. Natasha here is going to make you look a million dollars. Tyrone's organised this. Oh, don't cry, babe. I'm fully qualified. I did three years under Rini Sinkelstein. Work your wonders, Nat. <laughs> Why are you pacing, Pam? Uh. Uh, maybe I should bob out and buy some bubbly, eh? Calm your nerves. I'll only be a tick. Uh, don't you dare. I don't want you leaving my side today. Eh? It's funny. I did this lady's makeup last Saturday. She was ever so nervous. In fact, she was so nervous, she actually had a nervous breakdown during the service. What? Yep. I mean, she probably laughs about it now, but at the time... What, she actually... They booked, um, a Shane Ward looky-likey. And while he was singing I Don't Wanna Run Away, she were being sectioned. Still... She looked amazing. Is your dad giving you away? I don't think I know your dad. Um, actually, it's my auntie Pam. I'm going for a pastel hue. I hope that's okay. Look up. My mum's as flaky as the pastry on a pasty. My dad's about as useful as a chocolate ice skate. Whereas Pam's always been there. Plus, she's been married four times. Hey, that has connotations of gay abandon. Hey, now, there's only been one love of my life. And that was Whispering Jeff. Not much of a voice box, but tiger between the sheets. <laughs> my um, my mum and dad were always a bit distant. Not many kisses and cuddles. Oh, too many's not a good thing either, though. I've seen pamphlets. Whereas Pam was like a warm log fire, making everything all right. Oh, I've never been likened to a log fire, Natasha. Hey, don't throw your fag books at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have her right there by my side every single second of today, you know what I'm saying? Well, I best go back for bubbly then. <laughs> all right, yeah, thanks. What was it this time? That was the Dove Agency. I don't believe this. Dove Agency? Yeah, I'd ordered these white doves to be released during the service. Uh, of course you have. Why didn't I automatically assume that? Only a cat's had a man it. Ate them all through the night. That was the agent on the phone, sobbing her heart out, saying how much he's going to miss them, how they've been more a husband's worth than that rat Brendan's ever been. I said, I don't care, love. All I care about is my wedding, which is now going to be a dove-free zone. Ugh! Could kill somebody. Stuff the doves. Oh, that's what she's going to do this afternoon. Once I'm sat on a mantelpiece looking coy. What does coy mean? Never mind the wordage. I take it Molly doesn't know anything about the doves, am I right? Yeah, you're right. So therefore, if you're a few doves down, Molly's not going to know the difference. Look, explain to me. Why have we got ready so early? Well, because I read it in a book. On your wedding day, set your clocks an hour forward. Hey, presto, you're not late for your nuptials. Clever, isn't it? Is it? What? I can't leave Molly and meet Dave. You're going to have to take over. No, no way. The deal's as good as done. You've got more time than me. All you've got to do is drop the back off. Oh, please, time. Do it, son. Do it for Molly and Jack. Hey, we did say the dosh we'd get from this and buy him a lovely new pigeon coop. You all right? Oh, never better, Jack, never better. Might have a baked potato for me lunch. Been ages since I've had a baked potato. Do you say baked potato or jacket potato? Jacket. I'm afraid we're gonna have to split up. I'm sorry. Hey? Well, the very phrase jacket potato actually turns my stomach. Because it makes me think of like vegetables wearing clothes. And that is second only to small animals such as chihuahuas wearing clothes. Let's go to Ireland. Hey? Ireland. You like Ireland? You on drugs? You're the one banging on about food in clothes. I just said let's go to Ireland. Ireland? Going to Ireland? Both of you. Well, there's nothing wrong with your hearing, is there, Liz? Bet you say jacket potato and all. Ireland? Shut up, I'm not in the mood. Well, forgive me if I'm a bit confused, Steve. But one minute you're mad about Becky, the next you're going abroad with Michelle. Look, Becky doesn't want to know, though. And anyway, I was happy before her. I can be happy again. You can't pick and choose who you fall in love with. It doesn't work that way. Oh, trust you to bring it back to Lloyd. No, I wasn't. It's you choosing a different person to fall in love with every day of the week. Look, the less I have to think about him, the better. In fact, do us all a favour and steer well clear of him. Get your own house in order. And maybe I'll be more inclined to listen to a word you say. 
clanking away he was, like Edna the inebriate woman, and the smell of booze on his breath. It were like conversing with a slice of rum tipsy cake. Don't exaggerate, Mother. Anyway, it's no laughing matter. He's doing really well. Two bottles of wine he had in them bags said they were for Leanne, but he still had them. Really? I saw it with my own eyes. I've got my mother's eyes. Listen, Mother, I think I'll go round there later, you know, see how he's getting on. Just surprise him, you know. Only don't tell Ken, though. I don't want him being upset. <laughs> Maybe the wine was for Leanne. She hasn't got a drink problem. There's no reason why she can't have a drink when she's with him. Well, happen she's part of the problem. Your uncle Cedric was an alcoholic. What? Cedric that was married to Stella? His favourite tipple were vodka and mouthwash. The only way he could stay sober were for Stella to cut back on the snowballs as well. If you love someone enough, you do it. Just like me with your dad and mushrooms. Possibly Zac Efron. Oh, uh, the guy from high school thinking me, Jake. Yeah, I'd love to marry him. Oh, or Simon Amstel. Oh, he really makes me laugh on buzzcocks. I'm not sure that would be the most satisfactory of marriages. Well, no, but you'd have a laugh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, fashion isn't everything, believe me. Well, look at you, as pretty as a picture, and oh my actual gosh, the necklace matches the dress. Now, how cool am I at picking out gifts? And um, Yeah, it's lovely, thanks. Somebody had their hopes pinned on a car. Yeah, well, somebody has to pass their driving test first. Yeah, he has a point. Mm. Men don't know their own minds, I'll persuade them. Excuse me. Have you paid for that? No, you have. I'll see you later. I'm going to How long do you think you'll be? Well, it could be an accident, couldn't it? Well, I'm really sorry to hear that. Just get there when you can, eh? Ready? Well, what is going on, lad? We've got hours yet. There's no toilets in that church. I can't wait all that time. That was the Korean harpist. She is now stuck on the M6 in a slow mover. And she's just finished the last port scratching. I give up. Why are we leaving so early? Because I just want to get there and stuff, you know. I know when you're lying, you get the look of your mother. Can we not have a pint before we go? Kirk, when you're getting married, we can spend all day in the pub if you like. But can we just get going, please? All right, all right. Keep your hair on. Someone not right here. <laughs> Street cars. Yes, Eileen speaking. What was that? Oh, you're biking over some antidepressants, too. Sweet, how lovely. Yes, yes, I can see someone in need of them. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> what does toot sweet mean, anyway? Is it a form of a vegetable? Give up, Eileen. I am incapable of being cheered up today. What if I flashed at you? Slowly. <laughs> I don't want nausea on top of depression. Thank you very much. Steve, please smile. It's just that I find morose men a real turn on. Keep your hands to yourself, Grimshaw. Oh, God, I hope Lloyd gets here. Maybe he can cheer you up. I don't want to talk about him. Lloyd? Him! I told you you seem to wait outside. What, where there's hills to be sucked? Don't be daft, lad. Right, well, uh, you should just wait around there. Oh, weird. There's an old mate of mine over there that I've not seen for years. Won't be a minute. It's a shame they don't have drive through pubs. You wouldn't have to get out of the car then, would you? I think that might encourage drink driving. I suppose. Right, Dave. Glad to see you dressed to the occasion. Shows your Roy bands. You all right, lad? Yeah, fine. Not you, you pillock. Yeah, Jack, I'm just doing something for Molly. Hiya. They've sent me back for another bottle. You made light work of the last one. Um, I've only had half a glass. It's them lot. They drink like fishes. Oh, and on the house. 
again. It's the least we can do for a good employee like Molly. You don't do too badly out of it. Terry, you know, I was a bit off about the necklace. Honey, I'd be off if I thought I was getting a car and I got that. Did you choose it? Oh, I know you did. I mean, it's way too tasteful for my dad to have chosen. God, I hope I haven't offended you. I really, really like it. I know you do. You just can't do zero to 60 in three seconds, in it. Um, well, not without roller skates. Really fast ones. Don't get too drunk. I'll try. Actually, I'm a bit bored here. I might come with you. Okay. Uh, so where are you going? Well, Molly's having a crisis and she needs my help. See you later. Excuse me, have you? <laughs> so, what do you reckon? Did Daddy do good? Wicked. Ha-ha. A vote of confidence. Well, I wonder who that is. Ah, oh, yeah. Deirdre, come in. So, I suppose Blanche has been telling tales out of school, has she? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Come this way. There you go, there it is. One bottle of white in case Leanne fancies it. Look, I don't mind. I'm glad you're checking up on me, but really, Deirdre, everything's fine, honestly. My mother made it sound as if you were rattling. Do you want to check me cupboards for hidden magnums? No, of course not. I'm really sorry. And I'm very glad that everything's OK. Well, I try my best. You know, what more can I do? So, you've got Leanne coming round, have you? I suppose you and her are pretty close, are you? It's OK. You don't have to pretend you're interested. It's fine. No, it's just, if you wanted a bit of time on your own, I could take him off your hands for a couple of hours after the movie. Oh, right. Well, yeah. Well, Bob has a text if you need out. I've got nothing on. And hopefully neither will Leanne later. You're terrible. Shh. <laughs> Bye, Simon Law. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. See you later. Bye. Hiya. Oh, hi. Have you seen Sean? No. Is he wearing something outrageous? Just give us an orange juice, will you? <laughs> No, he's meant to be here, helping me get ready for this reception. Oh, do you know, staff are supposed to make your life easier. I'll tell you what, Eileen, they never do. I'm going to be grey by the time I'm 30. Pound, please. Do you know what's going on between Steve and Lloyd? They seem to have fallen out. As it goes. Yeah, I do. Uh, the thing is, and I've been meaning to tell you this for quite a while, I'm seeing... I'm seeing Lloyd. You better put a vodka in there. And to say Stephen happy about it is the understatement of the century. Because his best mate going out with his mum, perhaps? <laughs> You've seen Lloyd naked? Ugh. That is the scariest thing I've heard in ages. Make it a double. Well, it's probably just a mad fling, no future in it. I wish I hadn't said anything now. Now, I need somebody to be in charge of this DVD player. Somebody who's going to be sensible in that. You don't know anybody who could do that for me, do you? Duh. Hey, top lad. Right, you line that bad boy up so it's ready to play, and I'm just going to wash my hands, OK? Bad boy? Oh, yeah. I'm a really bad boy, Si. Given half the chance. I don't look like a drag queen. Definitely not. Gee. How are you feeling now? The nerves are shot to bits. I've not been this nervous since I did a disco dance display for the bishop's wife and juniors. Hey, nerves got the better of you that day, didn't they? I was moving from the take the baby for a walk into the oops upside your head when my watch flew off and knocked her dentures out. <laughs> hey, you haven't got anything that can come undone today, have you? I'm thinking wonky bracelets, dicky clasps. Uh, I don't know. I can't even picture my dress. Drink some bubbles and then you won't care what you look like. I, I want to look nice. Nice for my tie. And I don't mean that in a subservient woman kind of way. 
just want to see him smile. That's not wrong, is it? She gets perplexed by women's equality. That's what comes of being brought up by a woman who frequently wore a T-shirt saying, this is what a feminist looks like. Oh, I forgot to say, I saw Tyrone setting off for the church earlier. How much earlier? There's yonks yet. Yeah? Well, he likes to get there early, does Tyrone. Early bird gets the worm. Was he in a cab? Did it look nice? Did it look clean? No, he was driving himself. He had Jack and Kirk with him. Oh, well, at least they'll have plenty of time then, eh? Well, he's supposed to be getting a cab. Well, up they were busy. Well, what's he driving for? Look, isn't it time you had your frock on? Am I freaking out? I feel like I am. Hey, okay, now, come on, let's all take a nice deep breath. And calm down. Now, us girls, we like to be in control. Don't really trust a bloke to get it right. But believe me, Tyrone is more than capable of pulling this wedding off. Now, frock on, Molly! Will someone give me an hand? Come on, sweetie. Can we try and make this quick, only? I'm not wearing this suit for you, believe it or not. I'm actually... Well, I'm getting married in a bit. Mad, in it? Things you do on your wedding day? But they're all there, Dave. Looks that way, yeah. Can we try and speed things up, then? I'm not very happy about you selling on my patch. Well, believe me, it won't be happening again. And you want to know why? Sorry, I'm struggling to hear what you're saying. D.I. Dave Deakin, Manchester Police. What? I'm arresting you for selling stolen goods. What, you're an undercover cop, what? Got it in one, son. Hey? So, I'm going to have to confiscate this lot and they're fine. Well, it ain't my stock. Oh, well then, you're locked up, son. What's going on here? Leave him alone, you. Your little friend's been arrested, that's what's going on. What have you done, Ty? 